Hello, 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 and welcome to the final in the current series of Sissy Artist and the Waves, the fourth video in the Ocean Pour series that I've done. So we're going to get into it and just start pouring out the background. So again, I've got a white background for this piece and I have poured the paint out. It's just a, a CF Acrylics titanium white and water on this one. Um, all of my paints are just paint and water. Um, I have started spreading it out and realized that I do not have enough paint so I'm probably going to struggle um, but we will see where I can get to with this um, the one thing when you are pouring out the blowing out the background I've said it on pretty much all the videos um, the it's less important to get the good coverage or very thick layer or a particularly thick layer that you can um, blow over in the top corner on these pieces because the crest of the wave is not going to be going that far out. Always plan the piece that you're doing. You probably heard a thud in the background there. That's Celine Dion, my cat just jumping off the sofa as I record this on the sofa. Um, so I'm putting some more white down there and trying to get the edges covered. So this is going to be a metallic wave. Um, so it's all metallic colours, so gold, silver, bronze and copper, um, but with a little bit of Payne's Grey just on the edge and a little bit of black also included in just to add a little bit of a contrast in there. So I've got the area blown out pretty much that I wanted. So now I'm going to start putting my colours down. So I've put them in order just by the side and you can see the shadow there of me mixing the paints up. So this one is the Payne's Grey. Um, it's a Pebeo Payne's Grey. And yeah, that looks like a childish drawing of something. Um like to say it doesn't get worse, but it does. Um your artist here is um yeah, I'm a, I'm very childish. Uh that's a uh, what gold is that? I think that's uh De La Rowney gold. De La Rowney rich gold, if I recall. Um, I actually painted this probably a couple of months ago at this point. I record the audio after actually recording the painting because I always have um, music going on in the background or maybe a podcast or something just while I'm painting. I find it very hard to both talk and paint at the same time. Um, without making very, very silly mistakes. One of the things that I'm doing here is painting my sides because metallic colours um, often are semi-opaque or transparent. So, um, and particularly the gold on this one is a transparent gold. So what you want to do is get your sides covered so that the paint that goes over the edge 
it doesn't just go over the edge when you're blowing over it doesn't just go onto bare canvas um, semi-opaque or transparent colors they don't stick quite as well to the sides of the canvas when they're going over and they don't give quite as good coverage so if you use one of your semi-opaque or transparent ones and just literally either brush it on or as I'm doing here I'm just finger painting it on it gives something as a base so everything that goes over it it's not just going over on white so it's going to look better and one of these days I will remember to get that bit on camera um, so here we have one of my silvers I think that is a Crawford and Black Silver. Um, trying to get the um, that into the crest bit there. Um, and the keen eyed amongst you will notice that that I haven't actually put the gold in the crest. Um, yep, that. That makes it look worse, that little drip coming out the edge. And I wasn't doing the curve there just to um, make it look even weird. <laughs> um, this one is Deco Arts Extreme. Uh, yeah, Deco Arts Extreme Copper, I think. Yes, it is. Um, and I'm just coming in with a gloss black there. Again, putting that into the crest of the piece as well. So, yeah, you can see I've got a fairly thin ribbon of paint that's formed along the side. Um, I will, as I go in, be putting more colours around the edge. Um, this is another gold paint that I've got. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Uh, X4 acrylics gold, I think. Yeah, that's the X4 gold. That I'm just putting a little bit down on the edge, just because I want some more gold towards the edge where there's a gap there I'm filling it in with the uh, X4 acrylic silver and this one here is a pearl white that I just want to be in there it mixes in with the colors more than anything but it does give a little bit of a highlight in the section where it's poured. And once again coming in with a another bit of another colour, just mixing in, just adding in some extra bits here and there. And this is the uh, Deco Art Americana again, um, Red Ruby, which is a gorgeous coppery, copper, bronzy colour. Um, you can hear a cat purring in the background. Celine wants to be on this video, apparently, with her wealth of knowledge of art yes she feels very strongly about the gold that was just poured in there um, once again that's um, X4 acrylics gold and I'm just getting the very last of it out of the 
out of the um, cop. So I'm checking out what the composition is going to look like and deciding what I want to do and adding in some more silver to the crest of the wave and then coming in with that silver there. It is a different shade of silver to the other one so I can't remember if I said the one that I'd use was a Crawford and Black or the X4. Can't remember what order I did that in. Um, and once again, coming back in with some more gold on that one. I think it's the De La Valle, uh No, not De La Valle, It's a Pebio. Uh, iridescent rich gold um, it was an interesting it was interesting trying to decide the order of colors that I was going to have um, having the deco art Americana colors um, they create cells So they will they these create amazing effects as they go through. So it's just deciding where you're gonna have them in the piece so that the other paints interacting with them actually manage to create the best cells that they can. Um and once again coming back in with a little bit more of the black there and I was mixing in, uh, it was coming out a little bit thick, so I think I'd added a tiny bit of water in there. So I'm coming back in with some more of some of the black around the edges. And yeah, just trying to create some kind of peaks and troughs kind of in the colours so it's not all metallic you do have some darker colours in there to give some well not exactly shadow but give some contrast to the overall piece but doing it in such a way to create a a piece that feels cohesive and works and actually does the job of showing up as a um basically a, an abstract wave. So, yeah, it's pretty much there, ready to go. Um, has been a bit messy while I've been pouring the paints, so all you do if you do get the mess on there, the little drips, you just tap your finger slightly and it will take the top bit of the paint off so you're left with the base colour underneath which is good um, don't mix your finger around just slightly tap um, otherwise you end up creating a mixed colour basically I'm just going over there with the heat wand which is the dyspraxic friendly version of a butane torch It's it was about £15 from Amazon and you just do a, you go over very quickly, just circulating the hot air over so you don't scorch the paint, and do it in a circular or back and forth motion, which I was just um, showing. So now it's time for the fun to begin with the hairdryer. And I'm just rehearsing how I'm going to blow the piece out. As a dyspraxic person I find that doing that gets it to stick in my mind, at least short term, what I'm trying to do. So 
As with any of these pieces, I always blow the first half pretty much um, upwards into the background, and you can see that amazing um, Payne's Grey going a little bit blue with the white. It is oh, gorgeous. So I always do, as I say, the top bit first, and then spray spray blow the rest of it out while still trying to create the kind of curve of the wave most of that's done in the fact that you've layered the way that you've layered the paints in but it always helps to um create that motion when you're spray spraying there's no spraying at this point when you're blowing the paints out to create that motion um, other acrylic artists will tell you that you should only blow over once or twice I blow over many many times but that depends on my paints and the paints that I've chosen because if I know they're ones that are going to muddy I will try not to spray that much um, spray blow that much. Seriously, why do I keep saying spray? <laughs> uh, it's one of those days. Um, so at this point I've decided that there's not quite enough of the colour in there on the edge, so I've put down a layer of some black and also some Payne's Grey um, to create some more pops of the bluish Payne's Grey colour in there, because I saw that it was looking really cool on the edge, and I wanted that all the way through my painting. Um, you will see that there is a very large splodge of grey kind of in the middle. We will get to trying to address that as we go through. So I'm just spreading the colours out and you can see in the middle there some really gorgeous cells have formed around where the copper was that's the um, deco art extreme sheen paints coming out i haven't managed to get any extreme sheen gold um, in the uk it's just not reasonably priced when I've, whenever i've looked for it but the um, uh, red ruby and the copper that I've got are gorgeous, and they do an amazing job. So I'm just spraying, just blowing the colours out again on the side there. And as you can see, I want some more of the Payne's Grey to show up. So I'm blowing that back in to the silver so that's not just as much of a domineering blob um, so yeah it's looking amazing so so cool um, again trying to get the illusion of the wave in there so it looks good now it's time to do the crest. Um, so it's just going in, getting the right action with your wrist. I hadn't actually quite got it at this point. This is one of, while it's the fourth one in the series, it's actually probably the second oldest. The old one that I done was the monochrome. So I'm going in and finger painting in the curly bit of the crest there. Um, looks a bit like a skexis from um. Oh, what's it called? Not Pan's Labyrinth. The Skeksis. I've got Mother Ogre. 
was Netflix. Dark Crystal. Um, Chris kind of looks like one of those at the moment. Um, kind of stays looking like it, to be fair. It is going to change up slightly as I go through while I'm trying to get the shape to work. Um, and the paints have just mixed far too much on that little bit there. So the only option is to go in with some kitchen towel and basically you take up the paint that's on the canvas and then come back along with your base colour and the other colours but sometimes when you're painting you just know it's not right so you you need to do something to correct it it's just paint and it is your piece of art so if you want to add more paint in add more in if you want to take some out take some out follow your instincts it'll either turn out to be perfect and amazing either on purpose or by accident or you'll learn from it you'll learn and you'll do something different next time if something ever goes wrong just take time to sit down and look at what you did to see I've done it many many times and will probably do the same thing many many times going forward one of the reasons why I do these videos is to show people one as a dyspraxic artist you can do this sort of art um, and two to kind of talk people through the process of what I do so that you can learn from my my mistakes possibly be inspired by my brilliance I'll let you know when there's a particularly brilliant bit um, being terribly British there and you know self-deprecating um, but hey that's what we do so yeah I've put in some more more paints there to make sure that the crest works a bit better and I'm just going over again with the heat wand to get the air bubbles out of the paints so if there are any little cells in there they should come through and now I'm taking time to look at the composition decide what I'm going to do with it and spraying the um, soap and water solution over it. Um, you will notice on almost all of these, actually, I have used that. It is a almost a signature move um, with my paintings. I do like the little mini cells that it creates. The so instead of using silicone oil or special cell activators, um, what I do is I have a small spray bottle with 30% washing up liquid or dish soap in America and the rest water. And then you just spray that over the piece. It, um, it basically disrupts the surface tension of the paint so that the different densities of the different paints can come into play to force some colours up and other ones come down. Hey peeps, this is the dried result. I'm just going to take you in for some close-ups. I did some fiddling off camera with this, um, so just apologies in advance that I never managed to catch that on camera, but oh, this is gorgeous. Adding those last few little bits of black in that I did really made the piece come alive a lot more. Um, so we've got the uh, Prussian blue there with the gold. It is gorgeous. A couple of bits where the paint's cracked. Um, I was kind of expecting that because... I always find that the Pebeo Prussian Blue 
is amazing, love the colour, but I can never quite get the consistency. Um, so yeah, there's that bit, and then just zooming out, so you're getting the zooming out, backing up, seeing the whole thing, and I love this little bit here in the corner, the dog, and the light coming in together, it's so gorgeous, and that is a uh, ceramic heart that I made up with these colours and some uh, metallic purple that I had around from the purple heart that you will see at some point. Actually, you won't because the video failed halfway through. Um, and then again, going into the bit of the wave where the blue's coming in, and this is a bit that I went over. It was just two bronze. It didn't look quite right, so I came in with the silver, some gold, and some Prussian blue. And uh, yeah, that bit there, um, there was no Prussian blue coming through, so I did this about a day later. It was still kind, the white was liquid enough just to be able to get that. Over. And then going up to probably my favourite bit of the whole piece is actually this corner here. Um, just because you've got the copper, the bronze, the gold, the silver, all really working well together. And that gorgeous line that you've got with the copper and the Prussian blue, amazing, love it. And then just coming out to the edge there. I'm so glad that I went back in when I was blowing that. Um, and then I didn't really have to fiddle too much around here. Uh, where did I? So that's the bit that I did extra. I think it blew out to about there when I added some gold in. Um, again, added some in there. And then this whole section I came in, it just it just wasn't right. I can't remember if it was just a line of the copper that was there, or a line of silver. I think it was predominantly silver. Um, it just, it didn't quite work, so mixed it up a bit there, and I'm really quite happy with what I got out of it there. Um, but these were kind of half drying paints in the cups so there's there have been a couple of bits of cracking um, like there but it's not too bad and then you've just got the edge again which yeah this whole piece I'm in love with it and the little pops of blue that I managed to work in by adding in the extra bits of Prussian blue really make the piece a bit more of a cohesive whole, I believe. And then coming in to the, uh, I think, Grumpy Hippopotamus. It looks like a Grumpy Hippopotamus to me, um, because this bit's come out, um, which is the hippo's eye. The quizzical elephant was the eye there and the eyebrow there. Um, going into the kind of trunky thing. Well, trunky thing. It's a bit thick to be a trunk, to be honest. It's a thick trunk. Yeah, not sure I should have said that on camera. Oh well. Um, and then going into the little curly bit of the crest, um, I will come in and white this section out where you've got the kind of gold bit there where the paint bled. Um, probably not going to go in and white that section out. I kind of like it, but I'm probably going to paint over this bit here. It just doesn't look quite right to me. But I'm going to see how it does on the wall. Um, so, yeah, that's that bit. And I'll take you just back. So you've got the dry 
result on camera and I will um, stick it on the wall and get a picture. Um, it's not fully dry yet, so probably tomorrow or the day after I'll do that. Bye! Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and follow me on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter and join me again for the next series. Bye!